Hello YouTube. Bane666 here. One of the worst feminist journalistic acts I've had the misfortune to come across, is an individual known as Glosswitch. I featured one of her articles in a video earlier this year, as well as a recent episode of the propaganda of toxic feminism. She clearly drinks the poison cool aid by the bucket. And sees everything, and I do mean everything, in society is some grand patriarchal plot to oppress women everywhere. Males are always the animalistic villains, who are always at fault. Whereas females are always the noble goddess in chains, perfect but held down, by those evil women hating men. And of course females are never to blame, for anything. In fact she thinks women hating is natural for men, and is something we need to be trained out of. Unfortunately, this individual has sons. I hate to think how twisted they are going to be when they reach adulthood. Although if she had have had daughters instead, I have no doubt that they would have turned out just as twisted, but in a different way. No doubt they'd be perfect little reflections of their monstrous mother. But don't take my word for it. Let's have a look at some of the things she's had to say. And we'll start with some of the lighter stuff. From, Why Farting is a Feminist Issue. Oh and I should point out, she writes for the New Statesman, not The Onion. And clearly, farting is a major feminist issue of great importance. She starts out the article by talking about how Jeremy Clarkson made some thoughtless comments about women breastfeeding in public. To be fair, for the most part I agree with Gloss Witch on this topic. It really doesn't bother me if women want to breastfeed in public. I think it's a natural function and shouldn't be seen as a big deal. And to be honest, if I'm out having a meal at a restaurant, I'm more concerned about a screaming baby disrupting my meal, than a mother discreetly feeding her child a couple of tables away. But then she goes on to say, To exhibit any kind of bodily function in public, whether it's pissing against a wall, spitting in the street, picking and flicking earwax while one waits in a queue, is still seen as a male thing to do. We might consider such things disgusting, but men can assume the right to be disgusting in a way that women can't. It's understood that male bodies are a part of what men are. Female bodies don't have the same status. Even though, on a basic level, we know that they work in much the same way male bodies do, we shit, we piss, we perspire, we snore, we don't really want to know this. A female body remains a thing to use, to own and to look at. It's not something which does things suggestive of some real, human messiness inside. These days the phrase, real woman, is associated with dove adverts, not with women who fart and burp and might occasionally want to cough up some phlegm while out on a jog. I'm not saying these are pleasant things to do, nor am I proposing we organize a feminist fart in, unless it's held at Clarence's, but I do think we need to ask ourselves whether the perceived, milliness, of bodily functions is harmful to women. If we pretend that other women don't snore, sweat or have smelly feet, how much more ashamed will we feel of our own bodies, simply for existing in their natural state? Even in writing this, I'm fighting the urge to add, obviously I don't do any of these things, just in case it is just me. Of course I find this extremely interesting. Because if we look at ads aimed at female consumers, they nearly always present the males as mindless, Unintelligent, farting slobs. And it's not done to make the males look more superior. That's for sure. It is however, done to give the female consumer a sense of gender-based superiority. Are we to believe that women don't fart, or cough up phlegm? Admittedly pissing against a wall might be a bit more difficult. Okay, so maybe I should be totally fair here, and properly address her concerns. How's this? Ladies, if you wish to fart, cough up phlegm, or piss against a wall while out in public, by all means do so. But just keep in mind that you may be seen in exactly the same light as the men who do those same things are. If you are out on a date with a hot guy, at a fancy restaurant, 
and you suddenly feel the urge to let rip a Nagasaki fart, complete with fallout. By all means go right ahead. But just expect that exact same reaction that you would give, if your date had have done it to you. Of course, Gloss Witch doesn't see it that way. In contrast to the female body, the male body is simply allowed to be, to fill the room, legs spread wide, adding its own sounds and scents to the air. To assume the right to be a little bit revolting, to spit on the street, to jokingly raise your arse cheek to fart, is, I would argue, a form of privilege. It expresses an ownership not just of the body, but of the space around it. We don't see it as such because we presume men and boys are, naturally, into the sort of thing. You heard it first here folks. Farting is now a male privilege. We should now take a moment of silence, for the millions of oppressed women worldwide, who are unable to fart like men. Oops. Sorry folks, I guess I forgot to check my male privilege. But Gloss Witch goes on to say, Female bodies don't just exist to be looked at. They leak, smell, make involuntary noises, and what's more, if they do all that then it's also likely that they think and feel. But a woman having thoughts and feelings won't do. Best put her in the corner so no one can see. Okay, so society is oppressing women from farting, so we can oppress women's thoughts and minds. Okay, got it. Makes perfect sense. I find this claim to be particularly strange, considering there are many in society, both males and females, who would consider a male farting in front of a female to be extremely offensive. Let me ask you this, if men, or society, doesn't consider females to have thoughts or feelings, then why as a society are we so concerned about offending women by farting in front of them? Wouldn't we just not care? And it's also a matter of when and where you fart. Some advice ladies, if you enjoy your partner, either male or female, preforming oral sex on you, you might want to fight the urge to let one rip. If you can, of course. Such an act might be considered impolite or inappropriate. But seriously, male or female, you should feel free to fart, pick your ear wax, burp, cough up phlegm, or piss against a wall in public if you want. But others should also have the right to think your actions are disgusting. Every act, every action, has its consequences. Including getting arrested for pissing against a wall, down some dark alley while drunk. Ultimately, your choice. Do men do these things more, on average? Yes, and we are judged for it when we do. But if you want to fart for feminist freedom, go right ahead, maybe just open a window first, or give me some prior warning. I'm happy either way. Next. Well, let's go from farting to stripping. The next article of hers that I'm looking at is called Opposing Sexism, Not Sex, How Does a Feminist Mother Explain a Lap Dancing Club? Oh boy. From the article. Fantasy opened in Cheltenham Town Center in February 2014. It is the only lap dancing club in the town and its license is up for renewal this month. I've always felt uncomfortable about it being there, especially knowing that male colleagues could always gaze out of the window and be reassured that you don't have to treat women like equals all the time, but it's only since my sons have started to become aware of it that I feel really, truly concerned. Especially knowing that male colleagues could always gaze out of the window and be reassured that you don't have to treat women like equals all the time? Is she unaware that women go to see male strippers? Or that women go to see female strippers? Or is she suggesting that it's different when men do it, because men have a natural urge to oppress women? Next. Because lap dancing is not about sex. We all know it's not about sex. It's about power and it's about sexism. Men wear clothes, women don't. 
Men experience arousal, women simulate it. Men have fantasies, women occupy them. Men are subjects, women objects. Men are people, women aren't. There is nothing open-minded, liberating or pro-woman about the sexism industry. Repeating the same narrative over and over, the ideal woman, thin, silent, stripped bare, is one who exists solely to please men, it simply reinforces what sexists have always believed, that women don't have any subjectivity of their own. That is the turn on. That is the fantasy. It's not a fantasy I want my children to have. Oh. So when a man goes to see a woman strip, it has nothing to do with sexual desires, which are at the core of the vast majority of the human race, both males and females, but instead is actually about male dominance over females. Of course I'm assuming she thinks females going to see male strippers, has nothing to do with female dominance over men, but just normal sexual desires. After all, couldn't we flip her script? When a female goes to see a male stripper, women wear clothes, men don't. Women experience arousal, men simulate it. Women have fantasies, men occupy them. Women are subjects, men objects. Women are people, men aren't. Not to mention, women at strip joints watching men tend to be, shall we say, a lot more hands-on, if you know what I mean. But it's only objectification when men do it, right? Strange that. Next. If my sons grow up to be sexist arses who hate women, I don't think it will be all my fault. No, actually, it will be entirely your fault, and the fault of the bullshit ideology you force fed into their heads. Next. I know how fashionable mum blaming is but I tend to think the entire woman hating world has something to do with how little boys come to see their position in relation to their female counterparts. It is utterly inconsistent to seek to challenge rape culture, banter, and street harassment while insisting that underlying messages about what female bodies are for remain the same. What fantasy offers is recreational misogyny. It tells men that sexism is not an absolute wrong, presenting it as something to indulge in as an occasional treat, providing you've got the money to pay. It presumes a clear line can be drawn between real, human interactions in which one is obliged to treat women as people, and that special zone where men rule and women obey. But not every man can draw that line, and even if he can, not every man can afford it. Why should misogyny be a luxury item? In an equal society, surely it should be available for all? Why else would we have someone Russell Brand planning our revolutions? So here we have a classic gloss witch style article. She assumes that any and all actions of males are related to a male desire to oppress women. Clearly men don't want to look at naked women because it's part of natural sexual desire, oh no, it's because deep down every man is an oppressive cunt. Next she assumes the women are powerless, and treated like objects. This seems to apply to every woman everywhere. Presumably that would include herself. Which is strange as she is still allowed to write her oppression fantasies and pass them off as journalism, for a major publication. You would think that if her worldview was correct, she would be relegated to making sandwiches and showing her tits. Lastly, she ignores the same behavior from women. Women going to strippers and looking at men? Hell, why even mention that, because clearly that's something different, right? What an amazing double standard she has. Next. 